when the enemy comes No, I'm not gonna run I'm gonna suit up, get tough Put on the armor of God Yeah, cause I fight to win I break through any change you try to put me in uh, Cause I'm strong, got my armor on The devil's gonna run when he hears this song Whatever comes my way, I'm gonna hold my ground I'm gonna stand and fight, suit up, it's going down Yeah, cause I fight to win, I break through any change you try to put me in Devil, I'm strong, got my armor on, yeah, you're gonna run when you hear that it's time to Suit up, it's going down Welcome back for another week of Daring Faith. I'm Miss Bethany. And I'm Bryson. In this series, we are learning about different people in the Bible who had daring faith in God and how we can have that same daring faith too. That's right. And this week, we are talking about how we can be mighty when we do the things God wants us to do. Mighty like a royal king. Uh, that's not exactly what I meant by being mighty. Mighty like a roaring lion. Let's, let's just watch the story. A long time ago, there lived a man named Daniel. He was a good man and loved God with all of his heart. Daniel lived a normal, peaceful life in the land of Israel. Until one day, Israel was attacked by an invading army. The invaders captured Daniel and many other people, and they were taken to a faraway place called Babylon. Babylon was very different from Israel. Most people there didn't follow God like he did, but Daniel continued to trust God. He knew that God was always with him. Because Daniel was faithful, God blessed whatever he put his hand to, and people started to notice that there was something special about Daniel. Eventually, even the king of Babylon saw that Daniel was well-liked and that he was a hard worker. He took a liking to Daniel, and he even gave him a job in the palace. Daniel, my boy, how would you like to work in the king's service? Daniel continued to be obedient to God, and God continued to bless him. Pretty soon, the king wanted to make Daniel his right-hand man, 
he would be the second most powerful man in the entire country. But not everyone liked Daniel. In fact, some people hated him. A few of the nobles in the palace were very jealous of Daniel's success, and they started plotting to get rid of him. Who does this Daniel think he is? We'll show him who's really in charge here. <laughs> this group of wicked men started to spy on Daniel, trying to catch him doing something wrong so they could get him kicked out of the palace. For weeks, they watched his every move, but Daniel never made a mistake. He worked hard every day. He was kind and respectful to the people around him. They couldn't find a single thing wrong with him. And this made them hate Daniel even more. That blasted Daniel is perfect. We'll never get him. Maybe there's another way. Just then, an evil scheme popped in their heads. While they were spying on Daniel, they noticed that three times a day, he would stop whatever he was doing to spend a few minutes praying and worshiping God. They came up with a plan to trick the king into getting rid of Daniel. Daniel prays to his God every day. Maybe we could use that against him. Yes, finally we'll be rid of him once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> the wicked nobles approached the king with an idea for a new law, one that would make the king feel very powerful. Oh, great and mighty king. Sign a decree that the people can only pray to you for the next 30 days. And anyone who prays to any god other than you shall be thrown into a den of lions. The king really liked this idea, but he didn't realize the effect it would have on Daniel. He signed the decree and it became the law of the land. Hear ye, people of Babylon! The king has set forth a new order. The wicked nobles waited to see if Daniel would follow the king's new law. And just as they expected, Daniel chose to obey God instead. He continued to spend time with God every day, praying and worshiping him. The nobles immediately ran to the king and told him what they had seen. Oh, great king, we bring terrible news. Daniel has betrayed you and broken your law. By your own decree, he must be punished. All of a sudden, the king realized that he had been tricked by the nobles, but there was nothing he could do. With great sadness, he ordered that Daniel be taken away and punished according to the law. The king's guards captured Daniel and dragged him out of the city to a pit filled with ferocious lions. The nobles watched with a wicked smile as the guards grabbed Daniel and threw him down into the pit. The opening to the cave was shut and Daniel disappeared into the darkness. Daniel was surrounded by hungry lions in a pitch black cave, but he still knew that God was with him. And you'll never guess what happened. Nothing. The lions didn't attack. God sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions and they didn't touch Daniel, not even a scratch. The next morning, the king ran to the lion's den and he couldn't believe his eyes. Daniel came out of the pit completely unharmed and the king was overjoyed. Daniel, you're alive. Your God has saved you. But his joy quickly changed to anger as he turned to the men who had plotted against Daniel. You wicked tricksters will pay for what you've done. The king ordered the guards to grab those men and throw them into the lion's den. Every one of them was devoured before they even hit the ground. Daniel knew that no matter what, God was always with him. He trusted God, and because of that, God saved Daniel from the lion's den. The end. I can't believe that Daniel would go against what everyone else was doing. That would have been so scary, knowing that you could just be put to death just for praying. I know, and you know what? Sometimes we may not feel all that mighty. We may not feel like we have that much to offer God. We may not feel like we're strong enough or smart enough or capable to do things for God. But the great thing is that we can trust God and his plan for us. We will be mighty when we do the things that God wants us to do. Here, take a look at this. Here we have some pretty ordinary items, right? Yeah, I mean, there's kind of sin there. Nothing's really happening. Exactly. When we try to do things on our own and not what God wants us to do, we're not going to get very far. 
Go watch this. God. We can be wise, we can have peace when there's chaos around us, and we can be brave even when we don't feel like it. Like when Daniel went against what everyone else was doing. They were all praying to King Darius, but Daniel knew that was wrong, and he kept praying to God. Our memory verse today it says exactly that. It's from Daniel 6.10, and it says, But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down. He prayed three times a day, just as he always done, giving thanks to his God. The Bible says that when we are with God and when we obey God, we can be mighty for God. We can do incredible things if we just trust him and follow him. That's all for today, guys. See you next week. It's time for you to check out SpaceGo and see how much you can remember from today's Bible story. Bye. For thousands of years, people have looked up to the stars and wondered what's beyond. Thoughts of distant galaxies, strange planets, and possibly even life unlike any we've known on Earth. But no one could have ever imagined in the deep expanse of our universe lives one furry creature with four legs and a jetpack. Bob. His name is Space Goat, and he's here to help you. And he's here to help us. Here to help us answer life's toughest questions. Who did the law say to worship? King Darius? King Tut? King James? Well done, cadets! What did Daniel do even though he might be punished for it? Watched too much on Netflix? Ate junk food? Pray to God. Cadets, Daniel prayed to God even though he might be punished for it. How did Daniel prove he was mighty? Through prayer? By doing push-ups? Or sumo wrestling? Job, everybody! Daniel proved he was mighty through prayer. Until next time, stay spacey, the best. Challenger, go in.